Hey guys, so now we're going to look at something called the Lorentz transformation, which is a really important part of the theory of relativity. And you guys have all heard of the uh, twins paradox. And so we're going to do the derivation for that equation right now. So uh, over here I got two pictures. One is uh, stationary, so this guy is not moving. And this guy is going to be moving. Now I'll show you how he's moving later. But the most important thing is this distance, this length L here, and that length L are the same length. Okay, so this is a mirror. This is the official drawing method of a mirror in physics. Okay. And so let's go over to the non-moving frame of reference. So what happens is this guy shoots out a photon. There's a guy standing right here looking at himself. Shoots out a photon. It bounces off the mirror and he sees himself. So since light travels at a constant velocity, we have, you know, distance equals velocity times time. So we're using the velocity of light C. Oops, I bumped the camera. So time is equal to distance over velocity. And so time is equal to the length, the distance from here to here, over the velocity. He's going to speed light. So we always call the speed light C because it's constant in every frame of reference. Okay, so the amount of time it takes to go uh, just from here to there, a one-way trip, rather than coming back. So to come back, you just double this. But you're going to see why we're just going to pick a one-way trip in a second. Now, let's let this guy move that way really, 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 really fast. Not, not fast like humans have ever gone fast, but like super fast, but slower than speed light. So here's the guy right here. And what he does is he shoots a photon out this way. So this is light. And it bounces off the mirror. But this guy's going so fast, he can go over here and see himself right there. Okay, so what happens to us is this guy can go as fast as he wants in a human scale of speed. And this little triangle is not even a triangle because the speed light's so crazy fast compared to how long it takes the photon to get there and back. There's no visible effect, but in this particular case, there is. So this distance is velocity times time. So it's the speed of light times time. And this distance is velocity times time, but it's the velocity of this runner guy. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to look at the halfway path because notice it forms a right triangle. Okay. If we do the whole way path, then it's not a right triangle unless we drop a perpendicular and use a lot of cosines and stuff like that. We don't want to do that. We'll just compare the halfway path here and the halfway path here. So, <clears throat> hmm, right triangle. How about the Pythagorean theorem? So this guy squared equals this guy squared plus that guy squared. So c squared t squared has to equal l squared plus v squared t squared. So that has to be true. What we're going to do is we're going to leave L behind and we're going to subtract this part over. So C squared T squared minus V squared T squared is equal to L squared. And then out of this thing right here, we're going to factor out a C squared T squared. Okay, so here's our thingy. We're going to factor it out. We're factor out a c squared, t squared. And if I factor one out right there, what's left is a one. Multiply it back in, and you get that back. If I factor it out right here, what I get is v. Oops, bring your minus sign down. V squared over c squared. If you're not sure about that, multiply it back in. So if I multiply it back in, the c squared will cancel that c squared, and the t squared will show up. This thing equals l squared. Okay. Let's do this. Let's uh. Let's take this bracket thing and divide it underneath here. So c squared t squared is equal to l squared over this bracket thing. Now I know everybody wants to square root everything right away, but you've got to resist that for a while. And then let's solve this for t here. Okay, so I'm going to divide both sides by c squared. It'll show up down there. So t squared is equal to l squared over term in the bracket. Sometimes they call this term beta because it shows up a lot and people don't want to write it over and over again. So when I divide by c squared, here it is. Now square root everything. So square root, square root, square root, square root. And if we square root t squared, we get t. 
if we square root L squared, we get L. If we square root C squared, we get C. And if we square root this thing in the bracket, we get, um, whoop, that's a one. Okay, we get, you know, the square root of that thing in the bracket. <laughs> one minus V squared over C squared. Okay, now look at something right here. That is L over C. That is L over T C. This is the non-moving time. This is the non-moving time. What time is it? Well, time is relative uh, depending on how fast you're going. So these two times cannot be the same. Okay, so we got to call them something different. So traditional, it's, we say something like this. T equals, and we're going to make a substitution. We're going to call this guy T prime. So instead of L over C, our substitute is T prime over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, okay? And this is what's used to find the time dilation uh, for the twins paradox and, uh, you know, even, uh, even uh, while well, we've measured this stuff with particles. Like, for example, a muon, the average half-life of a muon is about 2.2 .2 microseconds, and you accelerate that thing up to, you know, 90% the speed of light, and all of a sudden it lives for 6 microseconds, our time. The muon doesn't know the difference because, you know, we talk to muons all the time. But notice this, if I make this c squared, okay, I have 1 minus c squared over c squared. That's 1, that's 1 minus 1. The square root of 1, I'm sorry, 1 minus 1 is 0. The square root of 0 is 0, and I'm dividing by 0. Hmm, maybe you can't go as fast as the speed of light. Maybe that's impossible, because that would imply an infinite amount of time. Hmm, anyway. So we have some problems that have to do with this. A couple other things. Um, mass is equal to rest mass. We call it m initial over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So another reason why you can't travel speed of light because, um, you know, <clears throat> a equals f over m. Right? And let's put that there for m. But the faster you go, the smaller this term gets, you're taking a number and dividing by small, this gets big, the harder it is to push, we'll never get to speed light because as this becomes infinite, we'll need more force than exists the entire world of energy to do it. Okay? And then another thing, L equals L initial times the square root. This is only when it's a times. 1 minus V squared over C squared. This is called a Fitzgerald contraction. So uh, a object, which is this big, um, at rest, Okay, and then you move it at some relativist, relativistic speed, it'll shrink smaller. This happens to you, but you don't feel it because when you move, you drag your meter stick with you and it shrinks too. So it's all relative. Okay, so we'll have a problem set using some of these. Sometimes you might have to take this as a solve for V to find out how fast you're going. Um, it is also possible to take this guy and derive e equals mc squared from it. That's a job for another, another video. Okay, that's all for this one.